Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum from Texas. My name is Heather, and uh, I came here to tell you the story of how I became a Muslim. So the first thing you have to know is I have many notes so that I don't forget anything. I have hot tea because my throat is a little bit not good, and I also have a tissues because usually when I share the story about converting. I start to cry because it's very touching to me. Also, it renews my iman and it makes me feel stronger. <clears throat> Excuse me. My story, uh, I was working in um, a child care center and we had a couple of Muslim families there, uh, very nice. And one day we had a... a mom who came in and she was Nikabi. She was completely covered and my boss refused to speak to her. And when I asked her why, she said, because I don't know what is under there and so I'm afraid. And so <clears throat> I said, please let me speak to her and you can uh, not do this. And so I went, I talked to the mom, and then she left the school. And when she left, I asked my boss, why did you um, not want to speak to her? And she said, I don't know what's under there. Maybe she's going to blow up the school. They want to kill us. And I said, who, who told you this? She said, it is in their Bible. Hmm. So I said, I don't believe any Bible of any faith says for you to kill everyone. And so me, being the um, strong-headed person that I am, I went to the bookstore and I bought a Quran and I read it uh, very quickly. Uh, it took me three months. I was looking for this phrase that said, kill everyone. When I didn't find it, I went back to her and I said, aha, it does not say this. In fact, it says the opposite of this. And then I left this book, but the words did not leave me. And I kept, I kept thinking that uh, how similar it was to the Christian Bible and that Mary was there, <clears throat> and Jesus was there, Ibrahim, Moses, all of them, all of the ones that I had learned about growing up as a Christian. And so I thought, I'm going to find out a little bit more. So I started to <clears throat> meet as many Muslims as I could. We have two universities in my city, and we have many foreign students. And so uh, I'm sure many of them probably thought that I was crazy because I would see them, I would run to them. Are you a Muslim? Let me ask you this question. And I ask many, many questions. Then one day I had a family, uh, Wad and Ali. They were from Saudi Arabia and they invited me to their home. And so I was feeling a little, mm, I knew them from the school, but I didn't really know them. So I went there and I was surprised. She was a mom like me, trying to juggle children, studies, <clears throat> um, cleaning, changing diapers. She was just a regular person. But the thing that wasn't the same was their peacefulness and their kindness and their generosity and uh, it was so attractive to me and this especially the peaceful part and so I began to meet more Muslims and no matter where they were from Kuwait Iran Saudi Arabia Egypt they all had the same peacefulness and if anything came to them that was negative 
it didn't upset them. They were calm. They were peaceful. Um, okay, here it goes. I told you I'm going to cry. And so I thought to myself, well, <clears throat> my family will disown me if I become a Muslim. So I will find this peace on my own. I can do it. I've always done everything by myself. I will do it. So <clears throat> I left that school. I went to another school. I changed where I lived. I changed my friends. I stopped going out. I stopped dating. I stopped doing everything. But still, I didn't have it. Now, here I am. I'm reading the Quran again. I am looking online, watching videos, asking questions, asking more questions, visiting people, running up to Muslims in the grocery store and asking questions. Uh, and I began to think that maybe I was not good enough for Islam. That I couldn't have that peace because I wasn't worthy of it. And so I sort of thought to myself, I would just watch Islam from the outside and respect it from here because I'm not good enough for Islam to be a Muslim. I've done too many bad things in my life. And so um, I was working in the summer school and I had two children there from Saudi Arabia and uh, a, ch a child, he was eight and his name was Safe. And they were talking about Ramadan. And so I joined their conversation and he said, Miss Heather, how do you know about Ramadan? And I told him, I have studied Islam. I know a little bit about Ramadan. And he said, you're a Muslim? I said, no, I'm not Muslim. He said, hmm, why not? No one had ever asked me this before. So then he said, oh, let me guess. You want to drink alcohol? And I said, no, say, I didn't do this for many years. So then he said, hmm. Oh, I know. You want to eat pork. And I said, no, say, actually, I haven't done this in about 20 years because pork is not good for you. And then he said, hmm. Then why aren't you a Muslim? And I said, I, I am afraid of what my family will say. And he said something I will never forget. Miss Heather, they are your family. They love you always, no matter what. And this was true. My family had seen me through everything in my life. All the hard times, everything that I had gone through. And so I knew that he was right. So I said, safe. How do you become a Muslim? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm crying. It's always overwhelming to me to relive it. And so he said, I don't know. I was born a Muslim. So we sent uh, an email to the masjid. And we waited, and he didn't answer, and he didn't answer, and the day ended, and the next day came, and he didn't answer, and so Safe's dad came to me and said, Safe told me a story about you, that you want to become a Muslim. Is it true? And I said, yes. And he said, oh, okay. And he got his mobile, and said, okay. Go there on Saturday. They will be there. Go to the masjid. They will meet you, and you can do this. I still didn't know what I had to do, right? So then, uh, as the day went on, it was a Tuesday. As the day went on, I couldn't imagine that Islam was that close to me. 
was it that close? Was it just a few days away? And then I started to think, I started to get very happy and very excited. And I thought, I can't wait. I cannot wait one more day. I can't wait. And so when Safe's mom came to pick him up, I asked her, I can't wait. Is there any way I can do it today? And she said, you can do it anytime. If you feel like you want to go to the masjid, go there tonight and we will meet you. We are packing. We are leaving tonight for Saudi Arabia, but we will meet you there. So uh, I went there and I walked in and there were many. This is during Ramadan. There are many women there. They are greeting me. They're saying, Salam Alaikum. And I'm thinking, I don't know what that means. Okay, hi. And then I went and I said, Mashallah. And when with uh, my family, Safe's family, um, his aunt, his mom, his dad, and his little sister. And alhamdulillah that they were there uh, because all that time that I had been moving towards Islam, but I was still on the outside, but Safe, alhamdulillah, but, but <clears throat> excuse me, the innocence of a child, he's the one that opened the door. And so um, always he is in my prayers and my heart because if he had not said that to me, we said, Heather, just do it. I would still be waiting maybe on the outside, watching and waiting. So that was during Ramadan in July. And so uh, Alhamdulillah, there were so many people who came to support me instantly I had this huge family of people from everywhere um, I can't even tell you what that's like to instantly have a family it is the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my life and so um, I told my my dad uh, my dad said, well, Muslims believe in God too, right? And I said, yes. So he said, okay, fine. My mom was a little bit more skeptical. Uh, now, five years later, they have all come around to that this was the best thing for me because they could see uh, changes in my personality, uh, in the way I live my life, and they are um, happy for me. They can see that it was the best thing, the best thing for me.